Good morning, millennials. Good morning, millennials, and happy Friday. We are coming to you live, literally live from the scene of the craziest thing that's ever happened to me and millions of others. I was sitting here mere minutes ago, I want to say six minutes ago, when the earth beneath me began to shake. I, at the time, I didn't know, but I survived and experienced my first earthquake. Jackie? Frightening. Jackie, I ran. First of all, I had literally no idea like that earthquakes could happen here. I thought it was they, like, not our problem. It's not really a problem. It's really crazy that one happened. We should look up the last time there was an earthquake in New York City. Well, let me tell you, I'm sitting here and the building starts shaking. Now you live in New York, there's construction, things happen, but it went on like a hair too long and then it didn't stop. And I'm looking around and the thing is, is very sadly I will have to be moving out of this office space sometime soon because I believe they're demolishing the building and making condos. So you thought so, today was the day Jackie, of demolition and you I didn't did, get the memo. Especially because like it's really been emptying out in here. And literally this morning when I walked in, we were remarking on like how empty it is in here. There's like four other offices in here. And we were just remarking on how empty it felt. And then like the building started to shake. I'm like, oh my God, they've started demolition and they don't know that I'm still here. I'm paying rent, help, help. And then I was like, then it stopped, but it went on so long that I really thought something was wrong with the building. You know, of course, first thing that came to mind, Surfside, that building, like these buildings just yeah. fall down. Yeah. So we grabbed our shit and we ran and we were like, you know what they teach you first case of emergency, like you don't take the elevator. We didn't, we took the stairs, but it's so funny Like what I grabbed on my way out. I grabbed my jacket, my sunglasses and my protein shake. Do you grab your phone? I don't know. I Yes, of course, my phone never left my hand. And we're running down the stairs, and as we're going down the stairs, we hear someone in like two floors below us, um, there's like an art gallery, and the people working there were like talking, and they said earthquake. I'm like, wait. So I popped my head in, I'm like, did you guys feel that? And they were like, yeah, we think it was an earthquake. And that made me feel better that like the building, and they didn't seem like rushed to be leaving the building. Yeah, yeah, no, and everybody is feeling it. Like it's not just you, like you don't need to do anything. And well, then I wrote in our family chat. And then when other people like in different parts of town began to feel it, I relaxed and went back upstairs. But it was so crazy. Dana texted me. She was in the subway. She did not feel it. Interesting. Satchel didn't feel it. She's like not super How far How is that from possible? Me, I don't know. I feel like she might have been in Satchlandia. Jackie, you couldn't miss it. It was so, my knees are still shaky. Now people who live in California I just are probably saw a like, video. over it. I saw a video on X because I searched like New York because I wanted to see, you know, what was happening. I saw a video from, I think it's FanDuel. They post like their offices and it's crazy. I mean, it's literally killing me, killing me that we hadn't started recording yet. Well, what time did you write? Did anybody feel that? I made my first call at 1024. Did anybody else just feel that? 1024. There's no realm in which we would have been recording. If that no, makes sense. If it was like 10.32 and we had then a time. I yeah. started to get really panicked because I called Ben and it failed. I guess I like got once a lot of people were making a lot of calls like in my immediate, you know, five block radius. Yeah. But it was giving like 9-11. Like I actually, that really panicked me. Like the, the cell towers were down. I don't know. It felt like an attack. I am not okay. I will never be okay. It was a category 4.8. In New Jersey, I hope everyone in New Jersey is okay. Like the thing about an earthquake is like, yeah, we feel it, but doesn't the earth actually quake where it like at the center of it? Like are people hurt? Yeah, and if there are maybe weaker structures, hopefully they're able to Withstand. stay standing, yeah. Oh my God, that was so crazy. Like, are you like kind of jealous that like you missed out? Everyone's talking about it, like all your friends? No, I feel like I'm a part of it because I was in all the group chats where it's like, do you feel it, do you feel it? And I also feel grateful that I didn't have to experience it. No, by the way, you that guys, like, like moment like, of shock. But you know what? I feel like it was different for me because that was my first one. And maybe the next time it happens, like I'll be able to remark on this journey and like, oh, I, I've never felt an earthquake. I didn't even know that like, that's what it felt like. I really thought seriously, like the building was falling down. Yeah, but earthquakes really aren't supposed to happen in New York City. Like, uh, what's the word? Geographically? Geolo geologically, like the mm. sediment there, which is why it's a good place to build high tall buildings like it's very mm -hmm. it's solid as a rock so yeah the largest earth earthquakes near new york city they're pretty sparse o in, over history no oh my goodness that was so so crazy i heard people in connecticut were feeling it jersey new york that's so crazy 4.8 magnitude okay and like what's like the worst magnitude 
worst. So like out of 10? Is it out of five? You know, it's a good question. I would have thought five. Magnitude 9.5 was the largest one ever recorded in 1960 in Chile. Damn. Yeah, well, so 4.8 is everyone- not nothing. I hope in everyone's Jersey. okay. I feel like it'll be a few hours before, before we know anything. But I By hope the way, everyone's okay. Guess where Ben was when the earthquake hit? The sauna. The toilet. <laughs> like he would be, you know? Did the and water like, like slosh on him? Honestly, that's an amazing question. By the way, so embarrassing because like if you're a boy, like we know you were pooping, you know? Yeah, you're not on the toilet unless you're pooping. If you're peeing, right. So embarrassing Ben made a duty this morning. I hope he was pooping because if he was peeing, it would be like, I would feel Woo! bad for your bathroom. I would feel bad for me because you know I'm the one yeah, that's cleaned that up. Yeah, of course. Oh my God, Like I don't even know what I was planning on coming and talking about here today, but I will only hear two four be talking about this till the end of time. My knees were shaking. But it is good to know like how I react in an emergency. I always find these... Um, sort of situations interesting because I learn a lot about myself like how in a real emergency I would react um, and they say some people freeze some people fight I feel like I hopped to it I was like let's get out of here yeah you were and I made haste yeah you didn't panic that's good to know but there are other times where I've been in like a, a situation that I thought was scary like remember when I was on the toilet that's classic and- dirty in the middle of the night and um ben like very quietly <laughs> snuck up on me and like i thought it was a murderer because i was half asleep yeah and it's so interesting <laughs> like, if there ever was a murderer in my house the only thing i would do is scream like i wouldn't run i wouldn't fight i just froze and i screamed yeah we'll work on Actually, that but that was so funny wait that just happened and it's this perfect segue for my la week so you know brooke brooke show schofield and tana mojo have a podcast and they just went on tour mm-hmm. and a crazy fan like stormed the stage and they both reacted in two totally opposite ways. Tana ran, Brooke didn't move. Like that's really how people react. And that is a uh, very exciting for segue for me. So of course I come and run my big mouth on the podcast yesterday, right? Yeah. Probably 10 minutes after we wrap, I get a text from like our publicist and they're like, oh, Brooke Schofield is confirmed. So I went and I ran, I'm like, Brooke is ghosting me. When it was already confirmed. Oh, she didn't confirm due to the pressure? No, but then she texted me a couple hours later and was like, oh my God, my home friends are blowing up my phone. Shout out home friends, love you. Shout out. It's always and they the were home like, friends. She was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm terrible with my phone. Like, I'm like, it's totally fine. I'm sorry I ran my big fat fucking mouth on the podcast. Like, everyone was blowing up her comments, which I like, but like, she had already said yes. Yeah. So I'm so embarrassing. Like, I am so, I can't wait one second. Like, let me give her a day. No, I can't. I'm like so eager. Okay, but hopefully the home friends have smoothed it over and they'll let Brooke know, like, it's just her eager turdy. She was excited. Eager eager turdy. Yeah. Shout out to the home friends who are always platforming us to their influential friends. Honestly, I feel like the camp friends are always platforming us. Like, that's our demographic. Oh, yes. If it's a Jewess. Yeah. But it's really the home friends. Yeah. The homies. I don't even know what like I was planning on like dilly dallying, chit chatting, pretty fast by bantering about with you today. But there, like for me, there's B E and A E before earthquake and after earthquake. Like there are two different turdies. You can say you knew me back before when. and yeah. after. Yeah, well, though I don't know what that. this new turdy is going to be like. Oh my god, she's fragile. All she, she talks really is. about is earthquakes and softball, and it's her friends and her home friends <laughs> and her mom. Like, it's <sighs> why has that I'm become okay. our new favorite reference? I don't know. It's my. I used it the other day. I forget, and like nobody got it. All he cares about is friends and softball and his mom. It's not even softball. What is it? He doesn't what play softball. Line? He's a man. All he cares about, I think, it's his friends and his mom. His friends All and his teammates can- and his mom. Here's what about is it? is Mean Girls. Okay. Let me tell you something about Aaron. All he cares about is school and his mom and his friends. Let me tell you something about Aaron. I didn't even All realize we were talking about, is- about Aaron. I thought we were talking about Shane Oman. I thought we were talking about Shane Oman too. That's why they keep throwing <laughs> baseball in there. All he cares about is his school and his friends and his mom. It's so And Katie, funny. is that bad? <laughs> By the way, so funny that you that we brought this up because on my way home from work yesterday, I was just like thinking about stuff, and I like remembered that there was this Mean Girls movie, mm-hmm. and it's so crazy that like remember how much hoopla like, and like, it came and went. 
as things with, do without even the smallest of cultural impacts honestly yeah sad like, People, you know, younger than us are not going to be in 10 years quoting it the way we quote, all he cares about is school and his friends and his mom. Like, seriously, what else was he supposed to be caring about at that time? Jackie, that's the point of the joke. Like, I guess Regina. No, but like a 17-year-old boy who cares about school, his friends, and his mom sounds like such a mensch. Mensch. Such a good kid. A good kid. Yeah. Uh, to be young. Yeah. So yeah, there was an earthquake. I am okay. Thank you for checking in. Um, I know you're okay too. So that's really, really good. And I hope everybody who experienced that like is okay. Yeah. I hope everything is okay like out there because, you know, closer to the source of the quake. At the center of it. I'm going to decentralize myself. Don't be myself. surprised if you feel an aftershock. <gasps> Maybe we'll get it on camera. You're going to make us keep filming until we do. We are rolling in perpetuity. Yeah. I've got some work going on in the outside of my house today. So if you hear some construction for the first time, it's not dirty. Oh my God. Thank God. I feel like I'm always getting blamed for the noise. Shame on this blame in the construction game. Shame blame in the roofing game. <laughs> well, the roofing game sounds like somebody who goes to parties and like drugs people. Not the roofing game. It's actually a set of gutters. Shame blame in the guttural gang. Guttural. Gang, I like that, not game. Okay, but it's not a perfect rhyme with shame and blame. That's okay. That's okay. We'll make an allowance. Are you okay? I am, I realize. Just like, like giving up? Like, are you here? <laughs> <laughs> she literally just like stopped being a podcaster. Um... <laughs> I realized, sorry, wait, this is so crazy. No, it's not crazy. Okay. I just like forgot to respond to like a somewhat like important timely Pressing. text. So Pressing I just text. did it. Okay, but The cool. earthquake totally threw off my whole schedule. Got it. Your text responding schedule. My No, my whole life schedule. Like, I feel like I just have to postpone everything. Life is different now. I have to go on like an eat, pray, love. Like book me a trip to India, girl. Like I need to... In that moment, like, I really reevaluated everything. I actually felt really good about my choices. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I was going to say, you going to do anything different? No, I love my life, and I feel like I'm a good person. That's good, always to reaffirm. Yeah. Gut check. What's the, what movie is that from? It's gut check time. I don't know. Come on. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? No. Not I. Okay. What is yeah. it? I don't know. Oh. Maybe, like, a dream of yours. Uh, no, no. I actually did have a weird dream. Like, so weird that I'm not even going to share it because it actually will expose, like, how big of a loser I am. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, but I now remember what I was going to come on this podcast and talk about. I had such a fabulous night out last night. Oh, you did. You did. You in the satchel, dear satch. How was she? It just kind of fell to, like, the back burner, you know, given my traumatic experience this morning. But Margaret and I hosted a dinner last night. And it was so fabulous because we were like in charge of the guest list. We invited some of our favorite girlies and I was able to meet so many people, um, especially one in particular who I hadn't met yet. Jen Sherman, the Peloton. The Pelotoaster instructor. The, Pel the Pelotoast instructor who um, was from that story we, we discussed on the toast a couple of weeks ago about Christopher Nolan taking her class and the one he happened to watch was her like ripping apart one of his terrible movies. Mm -hmm. um, we had been like Instagram friends for a while and I got to meet her last night. Jackie, she was so cool and like so pretty. And I, what I didn't know about her is like she was the first Peloton instructor ever hired by Peloton. I didn't know that either. And she, I was like, how did you hear about it before like it blew up? She was like, I used to like read this blog. I forget what it was called. I hadn't heard of it, but I guess it was like a popular blog at the time, like when blogs were a thing. And they were like just talking about it. And I literally like called the CEO and was like, I would love to work. She taught in like a local studio in, in New Jersey where she lives. And then she became the first instructor ever. And she's still like an instructor, but she's the OG. I'm sure she's like so rich. Oh, she's like the first cast member. Right. It's it's giving Stassi, you know? Were you going to say what blog it was? Would we know it? I hadn't heard of it, and I can't remember. It was called, like, We Love Blog. I don't know. Like, Wigovi. It was something like... <laughs> it was something like that. Okay. That's and exciting. It was. It was. It was just, like, a fabulous night out. You know, every now and then I love to, like, LARP as, like, an influencer who does those sorts of things. And it was really fun. You are an influencer who does those sorts of things. I'm you set really the not. bar for Well, that's true. That's true. You really but an I don't influencer. Really care. Yeah, no, but I don't do those. Like, I don't go out like to events, events. I want to go to events. Invite me to your events. 
you know? Yeah. So it was really fun. I had a great time. And then I, you know, went through this earthquake and I came out a better woman. So that's all from me. Love that from you. What about for you? you? I'm sure your day was less traumatic, but you never know. Uh, this morning so far? Yeah. Busy, busy morning. Not earthquake. Not earth shattering. Not earthquake caliber. Of course. Just me with my strands. I think I'm on day four of strands this week. Margot actually said something to me about your strands at dinner last night. Did she say yesterday's were too thick? No, no, she didn't criticize oh. them. She more so criticized you, like, as a human being. That I'm behind on a trend? No, she was like, by the way, like, Jackie's, like, strands. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, like, I did it first. <laughs> she was like, she totally copied me. I swear she said that. Okay, you know what? If that's what she wants to believe, like, that causes me no harm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah of course. Everyone's truth is their own truth, you no, know? No, and it's like... Even uh, saying your truth is obviously like such an insult, but it's like, okay, I don't Jackie, care. Jackie, I don't care. Also, Jackie, even though your truth is such an insult. No, no, <laughs> saying, say, calling so, someone saying something and then you telling them that's their truth. Oh, that is, is such, such an a, that's what I meant. Not what she said. Like, I, so I'm not going to say that's her truth. Oh, 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 so you're not going to insult her even though she insulted you. No. No, I'm like really trying to stir the pot and you're like not letting me. No, and if she was, I, I could think back to what inspired the strands, perhaps just the haircut where now I have shorter pieces. I, I honestly, like, I don't think one person can take credit for the strands. Like it's a cultural phenomenon. And it's an amalgamation of things. Like it's really for the headphones. Yep. It's working for the headphones because I was doing my hair and wearing the other headphones, but I didn't love how that looked. So it complements the headphones. But if she wants to be the credit taker, I'll let her have it. Oh, so you're letting her win. Okay. I see. You really That's want me to very, be mad. Very reverse psychology of you. Very interesting. No, I'm really, I'm just trying to like be. I'll be sure to tell Margaret what you said. I'm trying to be generous of spirit. You are. And you know what? It's kind of annoying. Like you're giving, I know like, you were. Teacher I guess, energy. We're all winners here. Like, please stop. I guess you were trying to start something and I thwarted I was. your plans. I was, I was. But don't worry, I'll find a way to separate you two. I'll, I'll find a way to cause a chasm. Schasm? What's that word? Schism. Schism? Schism. In your relationship. Damn, dirty. That's So cold. that I remain your number one. And I remain Margaret's number one. That's how I stay on top of this sister gang. Until I go and I talk to her about this. And I what, say. Are you setting a reminder to talk to Margot? <laughs> I heard what you said about me last night. Um, so we've got a great show today. We've got stories. We've got Queenie and Weenie of the Week. Jax, tell me the stories. Like, how are they feeling to you good. in a metaphysical good. sense? There's a lot of things that we need to know today, honestly. Oh, good. Okay, so let's dive right in. Let's not dilly-dally talk about my trauma anymore. Without further ado, here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. Now, the Fast Five stories that you... I don't like you need to know are brought to you by Papaya Reusables. So disposable paper towels are bulky, they are expensive, and most importantly, they are super wasteful. I feel like if you live in a house with a lot of people, like you always know it's like, oh, I just put the new roll in. How is it gone already? And how are we out? One reusable paper towel from Papaya replaces 17 rolls of disposable paper towels. They are very quick drying, so they won't get like that gross mildewy smell that some of our rags might get or like our cloths. Each pack comes with a signature Papaya hook so you can hang them around your house for different uses. Now, of course, it comes to mind in the kitchen. I'd like to keep one in the bathroom because I live with a splasher. Like, there's just always splashes of water all over my sink counter and it really, really bothers me. Um, it's just great to have in every room. They're super cute. They're not ugly. They look good. The hook is really cute. And you know, let's, this is like, we're beyond being wasteful. We're more mature than that. And Papaya Reusables understands that level of maturity. Go to papayareusables.com to take 30% off site wide with Code Toast. If you've got a little one in your life, I feel like you're just like always cleaning crap up. There's like crap on the floor, crap on the table, crap on the sink, crap on the counter. Having a pack of papaya reusables in the house like will save you so much time, money on buying paper towels. Papayareusables.com. Take 30% off when you use our code T-O-A-S-T. That's 30% off site-wide when you go to Papaya Reusables, R-E-U-S-A-B-L-E-S.com. Code TOAST for 30% off. Today's episode is also brought to you by Liquid IV. 
Liquid IV is the number one powered hydration brand in America. It has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink. You tear, you pour, and you live more. One stick into 16 ounces of water hydrates you better than water alone. And I have a personal anecdote I'd like to share because as you know, I'm like very much in my fitness era. And for the last like, I want to say like two months, I've been working out like four to five times a week. That's so crazy. I literally look the same. I don't want to talk about it. But a couple of weeks ago, I was feeling so fatigued. And I said to my trainer, Hillary, I was like, I feel like I'm like hitting a wall. Like every workout now, I just like, I can't do it. I get dizzy and stuff. And she's like, are you taking your electrolytes? And I was like, no. And she was 100% right. Like I feel so much better. And I feel like that can be emblematic if you're in your fitness era, if you're just in like, you're trying to get from day to day era. Electrolytes, all the vitamins and liquid IV, like will just make you feel more whole. It'll make you feel better. Whether you're, you know, spending your days working out, spending your days just working, spending your days running around, trying to catch a toddler. There are eight vitamins and nutrients. It's non-GMO. It's free from gluten, dairy, and soy. And they come in four delicious sugar-free flavors. White peach, green grape, raspberry melon, and lemon lime. I love the sugar-free flavors for a night after drinking. I find them really, really helpful. Turn your ordinary water into an extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV and get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code TOAST at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TOAST at liquidiv.com. That's promo code T-O-A-S-T for 20% off. Thank you, Claude. You're welcome. Our first story, new details are emerging about the... um, Earthquake? Dispute between Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, to put it nicely. Angelina Jolie's lawyers claim that Brad Pitt's physical abuse of her started before their 2016 plane incident. So as part of the former couple's ongoing legal battle over their French winery, Chateau Miraval, the actress's legal team filed... Wait. Is that like Miraval Rosé? Like... I don't know. That's like a really good wine. It is a really good wine. We'll have to circle back to that. You read. I'm going to... No, no, research. because you need to pay attention. Pay attention. Like please. you need to hear the deets so we can discuss because okay. legal documents came out today okay. um, that are about the winery, but then point back to stuff in their personal relationship, which, you know, everybody's interested in. Um, her legal team filed a motion seeking to release communications they say would prove that Brad would not let Angelina sell her share of the winery to him unless she agreed to a more onerous and expansive NDA. Within the new filing, Angelina's lawyers make the claim, quote, while Brad's history of physical abuse of Jolie started well before the family's September 2016 plane trip from France to LA, this marked the first time he turned his physical abuse on the children as well. Jolie then immediately left him. This is a pattern of behavior, um, Whenever there's a, this is what a friend of his said. Uh, This is a pattern of behavior. Whenever there is a decision that goes against the other side, they consistently choose to introduce misleading, inaccurate, and or irrelevant information as a distraction, a friend of Brad said, because Brad obviously cannot be reached for comment on this. Uh, Um, I just want to say the Miraval Rosé is a joint venture between the Perrin family of Mason Nicolas Perrin and Chateau de Boucastel and Hollywood actors Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. That wine, I feel like everybody knows that bottle. You put your thumb in the bottom and it's like short and fat and has like the tall... That's Angelina and Brad. I didn't know that. By the way, now kind of makes sense why they're going so hard. It's not just a piece of property. It's like a whole business. Too. Oh yeah, it's a business outside and it's not of the just like model. Right. No, it's not just like we make our own wine. It's like literally probably one of the biggest rosés in the world. Yeah. So they've been oh, arguing man, shook. over the wine for a while, and now she's alleging that he was more abusive than that time on the plane, and that he tried to get her to sign an NDA so that she wouldn't reveal these things, and now she's revealing those things, plus that he tried to make her sign an NDA. So this is getting really nasty. Yeah. And I wonder how Brad's gonna respond, because I feel like on the one hand, he won't really go to that level, but I feel like on the other hand, his name has really been besmirched over this and the stuff about the plane, I feel like he was starting to come back from, Mm -hmm. you know, like remember when he was at an award show and like he got like a standing ovation because I think people really feel like he's been misrepresented. Mm -hmm. And this kind of is even worse than everything that we had already heard. So funny that you feel that way because I kind of feel like it's been really messy. There have been allegations of abuse, like physical. They said he was an alcoholic and that's why they land the plane. And it's been now years since that plane incident. That was 2016. And I don't know why I feel like it's, completely unaffected him I feel like he's more popular like he's America's sweetheart I feel like he's one of those people who literally can't be taken down I feel like for a second it it tarnished his his name but then I think there was a lot of support around him I think people really think that he find him to be a good guy 
But now it's like, if he was more abusing her, like more allegations, like this is not good. This is so messy. And I just know, like, I just know Jennifer Aniston is like, you know, everything happens for a reason. She's like, it's not my problem. No, totally. And like, I'm sure for a while, like seeing them like love, happy, a million kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah America's sweetheart. Like to lose like a great love of yours to anyone is hard. But to lose it and then they become like the biggest thing. Like, that's horrible. Like, I have actually a lot of sympathy for Jennifer Aniston in that moment. And now it's probably like she's sitting there with her therapist who probably heard a lot about this. It's like, you know, everything happens for a reason, Jen. Yeah, and he's just in this mud-slinging, really contentious, really messy situation. Yeah. So, buddy, they're both, like, so, more so her. She's, like, really out of Hollywood. Like, in terms of actually, like, acting, but also I feel like she doesn't have, like, famous friends. He's, like, you know, kind of like a darling, and there are so many people, women and men, who have such positive things to say about him. Like, yeah. one of my favorite celebrity moments that I feel like I reference all the time, you can add it to Uber, Keenan's Uber driver, is the story Gwyneth Paltrow told about him on Howard Stern, where like they were dating, they were very young. They, neither one of them were like particularly A-list. They were really, really famous, but they didn't have like the sort of cachet or power they have now. And um, Harvey Weinstein, ah! oh my God. What is that? Emergency alert. What is it? Okay, like thanks, 20 minutes too late. 4.7 magnitude earthquake has occurred in the New York City area. Residents are advised to remain indoors and call 911 if injured. Like, thanks. That was 30 are minutes ago. Are they for ago. real? Are they for real? Well, Seriously. That was literally 36 minutes ago. That's insane. What does that do? That notification, like letting you know to keep doing what you're doing. And if you're not okay, ask for help. No, wait. And the way that scared the fuck out of me. That's the aftershock. Just give me a minute. You know yeah, how fragile Yeah, I, I know. Am. I know how fragile you are. And you are justified in this situation. That was nutty. Yeah, that was nutty. Should I like stay here all day? I was going to go to the kosher grocer. No. They said stay indoors. They're stupid. Okay, I agree. Now back to my story. Gwyneth Paltrow tells, it didn't tells say stay story. indoors. It said like stay where, like keep doing what you're doing. It said stay indoors. It said it stay said indoors. keep on keeping on. Okay, it didn't, but sure. But actually, I um, guess like if you're outdoors, some of those new buildings that they're building are being made like shit and like stuff is yes. just like flying off of them. And I, I, I don't know how they could withstand an earthquake, honestly. So don't walk. If there was any damage, like don't walk near those buildings. I'll, everyone, I'll just make knows, haste. everyone knows the few. Yeah, 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 the one. Yeah, they're building um, these like insanely tall buildings for what? For what? And so they're building them like shit. They're building them so foreign foreigners can like invest money. There's like this whole like conspiracy theory that like foreigners buy these hundred million dollars apart million dollar apartments to launder money from illegal activity. Nobody lives there. Like you know they built that no world's tallest new building. Mm -hmm. There was an article came out. Nobody lives there. It's all different people from different countries buying them just to launder their money. Yeah. Like you walk in, the doormen are like, nobody lives here. That's so crazy. Back to this. Let me just finish this. Hard There's got to be a better way to launder your money. Than for know. people to like build these insanely tall buildings. I feel like we learned from Breaking Bad. It's like literally hard. They did it with the car wash, you know? I, I don't know. I never watched Breaking Bad. And if I think oh. about money laundering long enough, I could figure out how it works. But it's one of those things that is out of reach. I can't believe you've never seen Breaking Bad. That's like one of the craziest things. Some fun fact about me. So he's making all this money being a drug dealer, but like, how is he going to declare it to the government as like how he has this nice car or whatever? So he buys this like small, decrepit car wash and like makes it successful with like fake transactions. Like, oh, things are coming. No one's in front of you. And then the wife is like, is checking people out. And she's like, things are coming and no one's there. Like, <laughs> that's funny. And so they end up having all this income, legitimate income, that they're like literally putting their own money into this business. Yeah, that's funny. So Gwyneth Paltrow told this story where her and Brad Pitt were dating. They were really young, but they like, you know, were stars on the rise and Harvey Weinstein was being a fucking freak and like uh, really aggressive with Gwyneth Paltrow and Brad Pitt like sort of threw himself physically in front of Gwyneth and was like screamed at Harvey Weinstein and put his whole career on the line. Harvey Weinstein was the most powerful person in the world and Brad Pitt was on his way to becoming this like A-list movie star and how 
you know, Gwyneth will always love Brad because of the way he put himself, like obviously physically in harm's way, but then also his career. Like he was, you know, I don't think he ever made a movie with Harvey Weinstein and he still went on to be like the greatest actor. But um, so there are people who have fabulous things to say about him. Yeah. But that also was a long time ago. Yeah. And everybody has different experiences with different people. But I just wonder if he will get down. Speak out. Yeah. Well, I am just shocked about this rosé. Like, I think it's so impre- What? Are you not recording? No, no, no. I'm recording. I'm recording. Just at the bottom of the, of one, two, three, four on the roadcaster. I don't have any buttons pressed. Me neither. Okay. Okay. I used to have like the reds on the side and then I'm like, should the green be pressed? No, Jackie, as long as like your Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I just up. went. Yeah, it is. It is. Sorry. I just panicked. Third heart attack. Earthquake. Jackie and the emergency Listen, today is, uh, today is just not for us. Even no, though it's honestly, Friday, we didn't even celebrate. I know. The theme of today has been panic. <laughs> panic True. at the toast dough. Yeah. Panic at the toast co. Title. Yeah. I can't believe we haven't even mentioned that it's Friday. Who are we? Jackie, I told you. We, you know who we are? We're AE after Earthquake Girls. Wow. Okay, well, um, I do feel like this is the beginning of more because Brad obviously has to defend himself from these allegations because it's not good. No, it's not. But I'm just really sort of stuck on them being the faces of that wine. And how impressive that it became such a big popular brand without them being like the physical faces of it. Like that's how like they might have bought the Chateau when it was already the wine that they were making that was already popular. And and maybe they just loved the wine. It exists like without them. Yeah. Oh, that's a fat, fat point. Even though it said the thing that I read, it was like a joint venture. Well, now it it was probably a joint venture. I'm not saying yeah, this no, is what right, happened, right, but it could right. have been a joint venture, and then they bought this third of Chateau Marival. And I agree. That's why you just don't buy a winery. Yeah, it just gets so messy when you're buying a winery. And it's so funny because I was actually thinking about buying a winery, but now I'm but not. But look, going to. it's a mess. It's a mess. I can't say it's a mess without thinking of that movie, the campaign. I've never seen it. The one with Will Ferrell Seth and Rogen. Zach Galifianakis? Yeah, no, same thing. Not same Seth thing. Rogen and Uma Thurman. No, no, I know. I, I knew which one you meant. They're like both running for a local seat. <laughs> yeah. And Zach Galifianakis is just like, it's a mess when he's talking I've about the town. Never seen it. It's a really good movie. Let's watch it together sometime. And It'll it's a nice. great movie on like our civic system, I would say. Love that. And why it's important to have no taxation without representation. I mean, I've been saying that for years, but I just She's no just said no taxation, period. Period. If I ever run for office, it'll be no taxation. Okay. <laughs> okay, you know the one, two, three, four at the top of the oh, box? The yeah. two isn't clicked. It's still fine, right? Yeah, neither is mine. Okay, but what's that button for? Did you for? fuck with it from yesterday? I turned it off and on by accident. Like That's fine. Okay. But why would it, why shouldn't it be clicked? I don't know, but mine isn't, and I haven't touched it. Like, please. I'm seriously, seriously. panicking. Like, I can't go no, on. By the way, if we, seriously, if we, like, wrap this episode and we don't have any audio, like, I can't go through this again. No, we're calling it. I, we're calling it, and I will write an apology letter to all of our sponsors from today. I'm sorry to Papaya done. Reusables. I'm sorry to Liquid IV. I'm sorry to Vanderpump Villa, and I'm sorry to Built Rewards. <laughs> we'll do it on our Instagram. Yeah, we'll see. Let's let's keep going because there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Our next story is only number two. Yeah, I'm aware. But it gets a little... We'll cruise. Here's what Sofia Vergara and Joe Manganiello will each walk away from at Ooh, their divorce. Which my is favorite a, kind of news, divorce financial news. It's a bit of misleading news because oh. they had a prenup that they're both honoring so the judgment obtained by page six details how they will divide their assets and property as dictated by their prenuptial agreement. He walks away with his clo- with his clothing. I mean, what is she going to do with his clothing? I would hope so. <laughs> clothing, jewelry, and miscellaneous personal effects, as well as as well of his earnings and accumulations since the start of their separation, which was July 2nd, 2023. She leaves with her personal effects, including jewelry and clothing. And what about her like period underwear? Does she get to keep those? Like, why are we reading this? So I think what they did was they cut them down the middle. (laughs) 
Not a cool joke <laughs> while I'm drinking my protein shake. They cut them down the middle. <laughs> Do we have a paper towel? He got one half and she got the other half. Oh, God, I just stained the carpet. Like, this carpet's destroyed. I was going to throw it out anyway because it's literally, like, shit stained with, like, Theo's duty. Oh. Oh, my God. That was really, like, one of the... <laughs> the thing is, like, we are so funny. Like, it's just not fair. It's dangerous, man. Honestly, I'm not even bothering to clean the carpet. Like, it's truly a lost cause. Not today, Claude. Woo! <laughs> yes, I did hear that they cut them down the middle as well. <laughs> she had to keep her jewelry clothing, the left side of her period pants, and her earnings since they separated last summer. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> they never had any community property between them, and they both acknowledged the validity of their prenup. They're, this is such like a standard Hollywood marriage, by the way. Like, what about a house? Yeah, it's possible that, like, they just moved into his house or her house and it was already in one of their names. Like, I feel like after what she went through with her crazy ass ex and his embryos, mm -hmm. like, she was not going into another marriage, you know how, how in love she was, without being strapped, you know, properly prepared. And he's, like, a classic Hollywood guy. I feel like at, at, if you've been in Hollywood for a certain amount of period and you've been, like, you know, scarred and, and bruised and battered, like, you go into this, like, almost methodically, very similar to Ariana Grande. Like, when you're at a level, you have it, you know, tight. And it's just crazy to me that like there are prenups that people don't honor. Then what the fuck was the point? Like, remember it was like a huge win for Kelly Clarkson when the yeah. judge uh, announced like we, after months, we will be moving forward with the prenup. Well, duh, why the fuck did we spend all the money on the lawyers and the time and energy signing it before the marriage? Yeah. Yeah, plus they don't have kids. That makes this easier. Easier, yeah. Yeah. Same uh, with Ari Ariana Grande. Right. Our next story, um, some major news for Miss Gypsy Rose Blanchard. She was spotted holding hands with her ex-fiance, Ken Erker, after splitting from her husband. And she told People Magazine that she's going to be getting some cosmetic surgery. What do you think she's going to get done? She's getting rhinoplasty. I respect it. I do. I respect it, too. I respect anyone who wants to, you know, get... Plastic surgery. I'm not a plastic surgery shamer. It's not for me. No, me neither. And also, like, like I see, like I see what would bother her with her nose. You know what I mean? It's oh. not a perfect nose. Is that mean? Like, it's just very real. No, like I'm a big fan of like changing things that you don't like or that you. And I feel like sometimes someone will be like, I hate my nose, and it's like the perfect fucking nose. You're like, shut up. Yeah. No, with Gypsy, like, yeah, girl, get a nose job. Love that for you. I was gonna say, I feel like you know she's 32, so it's like I would hope I. At that age, like, you you love the skin you're in, you know? And that just, like, makes me sad that she wants to change herself. But maybe she's wanted to change herself all this time, but she was in jail. And she probably didn't have financial resources. And before that, like, she was under her mother's thumb. Yep. Which is no, a nice way of saying munch in housing by proxy. <laughs> it's a very nice way of saying it. We also have to realize, like, with Gypsy, like, we're literally probably dealing with someone with the emotional maturity, given, like, her life. She was, you know, stuck at home for eight, 15 years and then in prison for eight. Like... Well, that math doesn't add up, but you know what I mean. She is probably like the emotional maturity of like a 22 year old. Yeah, she's just catching up now. But what is interesting is that she was spotted showing like some PDA with her ex fiance. She no, they just were smoking up cigarettes too. They were smoking cigarettes, holding hands, doing a little grocery shop at the Dollar General. I'm sorry, but like Gypsy Rose needs to give classes on how to catch a man, multiple men, make them literally kill for you. I know, and I don't want to shame any of our girls listening who are single, but like Gypsy's been out of jail for all of five minutes and she's had two boyfriends. And what have you done in the last month? How many Claudia, dates have you been on? She's had a husband, a fiance, an ex-fiance, now boyfriend. Like, you need to step it up. Maybe that should be the next business venture. Once things quiet down for her, you know, you can't stay so famous forever. Gypsy's rules of love. Gypsy's rules of love. She is doing a new show now, like Gypsy Rose Breaking Free sort of thing. Uh, yeah, of course. Life Me After TV. Lockup. But that's kind of incongruous what I felt like your take on her was. Which is like... What was my take? I she forget. was doing like her post-jail press and then she was going to go <gasps> live... Oh no, the buccal chair is destroyed. I feel like buccal cleans easily. Oh no, I'm such an animal. I blame you. For being too funny. Folex. I think under the sink we have some Folex. I'm sorry. I apologize for being too damn funny. You should. Oh my God. This is an expensive chair. Let me let me soak it up. Absorb. 
What did I say about Gypsy? Today's episode is just a cock to yeah, be Yeah, like, sorry. We can't be perfect all the time. No, like, and it's Friday. Like, fuck off. Okay, what you had said about Gypsy was you felt like she was doing, like, the jail press, you know, sort of getting her back, and then she was going to, like, go live a quiet life, and she wasn't about this, and she was just going to go, like, be married with her husband. But now I feel like she's doing her show. She left her husband. She's kind of a woman about town. I feel like yeah, she's like- going to stay being a public figure. Perhaps like the quiet life wasn't for her, but it was for that that freak, whatever his name was, Ryan. Ryan, what is it? Um, by the way, the two of us like I'm cleaning my chair. You're doing your computer. Oh, I have a tie. Ryan Scott too. RSA. RSA. Ryan Scott Anderson. Oh yeah, he's a three name wonder, much like um you know F Scott Fitzgerald, <laughs> much like Gypsy Rose Blanchard. <laughs> Wait five minutes and then wipe away with a stain cloth. Okay, so I have to wait five minutes. Somebody remind me in five minutes. This is so crazy. Like, he's a three name wonder, like GRB. Oh, like GRB, correct? Unless he was like copying her. I could see that for him. No, I told you I didn't like him. We're newly together, Weds. Shut up. <laughs> Anyways, Gypsy Rose has another man, and you don't. That's the headline. Jackie's putting you bitches in your place this week. Like, Just kidding. Everyone run your own race. Like, seriously. It's so true. It's not a competition. Everyone's timeline is their own. And like, you know, yeah, Gypsy has a boyfriend, but she was also in prison for eight years. Yeah. And her mom locked her up for 20. Like, did that happen to you? No. So we, no. All, we all have our own, you know, and we're all de- dealt a deck of cards in life. Okay. And some are different than others. And it's like she left her husband. Now she's going back to her ex. Like, that's not always the best thing to do. You broke up for a reason. 1000% like also Gypsy like perhaps meet someone new she will don't worry about her now I have a crazy question at what point was this man her fiance yeah of course I'm like is he the killer no no I but like is he just like a, a pen pal from prison like when would she have oh. tried to have gotten engaged how did the two meet okay that's a really good question Now that I'm getting the stain out of the chair, I see like lipstick stains and like other he, things. They just... became engaged after he wrote to her in 2018 while she <gasps> oh, was yeah. serving in her prison sentence. He reached out after watching Mommy Dead and Dearest, the documentary based on her childhood story. They got engaged in October 18. However, he broke up with her when the act debuted in Hulu. Oh my God. So he's just like willy nilly based on. Obsessed with TV. No, it's like, I like this show. I'll marry you. Oh, this one was bad. Divorce. <laughs> but maybe life, de- life after lockup changes my life. <laughs> Um, according to her ebook, that's what she said. Um, that he broke up with her after the act. I guess he didn't like Joey King's portrayal. I just have to I don't say, like. I'm so I just want to say, like Joey King. Based on that, I don't like him for her. I agree. Um, did you see jo- uh, Joey King is in this uh, Holocaust movie? New Hulu. I think it's a show based on a book. We were the lucky ones. Like a ho- I've heard, it's very good. Um, and she literally had to like turn off all of her comments on Instagram. Like people are such animals. I can't. People are such animals. Them and their fucking watermelon emoji. Shove it up your ass, bitch. Okay. It's so uh, it's so crazy out there. It's so crazy out there. I'm so glad I'm not one of the mentally ills. You know. No, like, I'm I, so. I stand firmly on solid ground, and I feel really good about that. I'm so glad that we have this like peaceful pocket of on the internet, smart thinking listeners. It's so true. But it's so dark out there beyond we're so lucky we have each other yeah are you ready for our next story what a number? little biopic news number Ooh, four my favorite number oh. four though no, no is it the biopic news that's brought to you by vanderpump villa it is this is a really fun new series from Lisa Vanderpump. It's called Vanderpump Villa, and it is on Hulu. She has a brand new home there on Hulu, and she also has a brand new home. It's an escape to the French countryside. So the series is giving very much like upstairs, downstairs, Downton Abbey energy, where they have these like fabulous young hot things working in this gorgeous, fabulous, rich villa for these, you know, guests. And it's fun. It's VIP. You're entering first class luxury and world class drama. So the work staff live work and play together 24 7 while dealing with you know rivalry romance misadventures so it's a workplace drama from lisa vanderpump it has that bon voyage french escape luxury i feel like this reality show kind of feels different than other reality shows i've never seen a reality show set in like gorgeous france you know Mm -hmm. it's always like american trash no not vanderpump villa um it's on hulu 
you can escape to the French countryside at Chateau Rosabelle, which will serve as the opulent background for the new series. Audience are going to get to indulge in a world, old world setting with modern day fun throughout the wealthy and VIP guests as they experience an extravagant Vanderpump style vacation that only Lisa Vanderpump can pull off. The series has just premiered. You can watch new episodes of uh, Vanderpump Villa every Monday now on Hulu. I feel like we've all been looking for like a new reality show. Lisa Vanderpump is kind of, once it has the LVP stab of approval, like we're good to go. And same with Hulu. So watch the new episodes of Vanderpump Villa. They are um, airing every Monday now on Hulu. They just premiered. So catch up if you're behind. And thank you Vanderpump Villa and Hulu for sponsoring today's episode. Today's episode is also brought to you by Built Rewards. Listen up to anyone who rents. Do you ever feel like you're stuck in this loop of rent payments, just watching your money vanish into thin air? Well, it's time to turn that rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. And that's where Built Rewards comes in. Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Even if you're still rocking with the old school rent vibes, you know, you're writing a check, Build Rewards has got your back. They will mail the check for you, basically like having a personal rent paying assistant. Every month you pay your rent and then you watch the built points roll in and you can spend the points on amazing things. So you can use your points of course, on a dream vacation, towards a flight or a hotel. They have over 500 airlines and over 700,000 hotel and property partners. You can use your points to sweat it out, redeem your points to book fitness and studio classes. You can also use your points towards a future rent payment or towards a future down payment um, on a future home. So just uh, in the spirit of transparency, I want you guys to know I love Built Rewards. I've been a Built member for like two years. I'm actually an investor in the company. That's how hard I believe in it. You can earn points. I mean, paying rent is the most infuriating thing ever. It's like flushing money down the drain. And especially if you're into points culture, you know, like that's your biggest expense every month. You should be earning points for it. And now you can with Built Rewards. You can earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash toast. I feel like a lot of the toasters are Built members already because I've been talking about it for so long. But if you're not, go to joinbuilt, B-I-L-T dot com slash toast to earn points while paying your rent at joinbuilt.com slash toast. Thank you, La. You're welcome. Our next story, biopic news. Mm -hmm. Michael Douglas will be playing and is playing. The series is like shot and locked and loaded and he's doing press for his series where he plays Benjamin Franklin. Okay. Michael Douglas was invited to play Benjamin Franklin in Apple TV's Franklin and he immediately took out a hundred dollar bill. He said, I looked at Ben and thought, I've got a long ways to go, the two-time Oscar winner told Variety. So Michael Douglas is obviously doing press because we talked about him two days in a row, which yes, has never so happened. I don't know if we've ever talked about him one day in a row. I have to say the craziest thing and I know people are going to be like, Claudia, you're a disgrace. That like you don't really know Michael Douglas. No, no, no. I like know him. Oh my God, there's more protein shake on my shirt. But that you confuse him with someone else? Michael J. Fox. Yep, same. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, that makes Which means better. that it's not just us. And that's not like a, a childhood thing, I think, either. I think they're like Michaels of a certain age who, yep. who are in a lot of really iconic things that we don't watch. Yep. So neither one of them I know Michael J. Us. Fox is Back to the Future. That's good. Yeah, I'm happy for him. Um, and I know Michael Douglas. Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yes. And Michael J. Fox Parkinson's. Yes. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes. Got it. Michael Douglas Franklin. Michael Douglas' dad, Kirk Douglas. Yes. Nepo baby. Nepo baby. I mean, he's what? Nepo grandpa. Yeah. Anyways, he's playing Franklin in Stacey Schiff's Based on Stacey Schiff's A Great Improvisation, Franklin, France, and the Birth of America, it follows Ben Franklin's 1776 trip to Paris, where he hopes to persuade the king to fund America's fight for independence. Noah Jupe co-stars as his grandson, traveling companion Temple. If we didn't get France's support, who knows what, have ha what would have happened, says Douglas. Honestly, this sounds really great. Yeah, it's giving like American Revolution vibes, like that one part of history, like I kind of know. I remember, you know, the red coats, the British are coming, the Boston Tea Party. It's like we party. know it because we learned it in school. It's like one of the, the few Classics. things that you learn in school. But I feel like there haven't been a lot of period pieces made about it, and especially not like big, big ones that everybody has seen, you know? Yeah, no, I feel like that time period in general, there's like, where are the movies? Right, like we don't have a George Washington. We got Lincoln. With a oh, uh, classic Daniel Day, Daniel Day, GDL, Triple D. <laughs> By the way, I want everyone to know my stain is like the chair is like the material where the stain was like a shit, but it's white. 
Great. You know? Yeah, you just like scrubbed it off, scratched it off. Yeah, no, I definitely, like I kind of crushed this. Like I'm not going to lie. So uh, he talks about the role and the show, which uh, again, I have been pretty much influenced to watch. He, uh, he was asked, what would Ben think, Franklin think about the state of US politics today? And he said, he'd probably have a heart attack. 1000%, <laughs> WWBFD, what would Ben Franklin do? I don't know, he'd probably go fly a kite. No, right? what would Ben Franklin think? Is Ben Franklin the one who invented electricity? Thomas Edison. But Ben Franklin like was an inventor, swirly. No, he was swirling around with that kite, no? Maybe kite. And it got struck by lightning and he was like, energy, no? I don't know this story. Does ben Franklin. know what the fuck I'm talking about? Ben Franklin, electricity. Ben Franklin. The lightning rod? Ben Franklin and the kite experiment. Thank you. I'm he did not discover electricity during this experiment, however. Oh wait, I'm sorry. To dispel another myth, Franklin's kite was not struck by lightning. If it had been, he probably would have been electrocuted. <laughs> for say. Instead, the kite picked up the ambient electrical charge from the storm. How do these like historical rumors get started? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like um, like George Washington never told a lie, and like the wooden teeth, or was that real? No, I think everybody had wooden teeth in that day. Like, what were they going to have braces? Okay, wait, wait. What? Like, they had real teeth, like human Right, teeth. but like, say you had a rotten tooth that had to go, what would they put in? A piece of wood. You look Burn like a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they would say to George Washington. And, and Mercedes Javid's mom said to George Washington in that moment, you don't remember this part of the history books? You look like a piece of wood. Yeah, and that's how historical myths get started. And I just feel like that's like the only, like The Toast is the only show where you will get the absolute most random niche reference in pop culture. Like, I don't know if anybody has ever even remarked on that one line the way my group of friends had. From that, when Mercedes Javid got married, it was a gorgeous ceremony. They're still together, honestly, like iconic couple. Her mom is like just one of those classic, they say classic Persian, but I feel like it's every like immigrant parent, like very critical. And she comes out and she's like, all this gorgeous makeup. She's like, mom, how do I look? Like a bride on her wedding day. And she goes, you look like a piece of wood. And That's then harsh. another line I love to quote. She's walking down the aisle. She looks gorgeous. Very, you know, very busty dress. She gets to the altar and her husband goes, whispers to her, your cans look sick. And honestly, her cans did look sick. Beautiful so day. Yours. So do yours. Oh, thanks. So yeah, all George Washington cared about was school and his mom and his friends. Uh, is that bad? <laughs> all that to say. Um, okay, won't be watching this, but good for Michael Douglas. You'd love to see people out here, you know, women in the workplace. You do. Our fifth and final story is really cute news, actually. I didn't know um, Jimmy Kimmel was was uh, capable of participating in such cute news, but it is cute. Wow, I never thought you would say there's cute news that has to do with Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. I find Jimmy Kimmel insufferable. Does anybody else? Like, I find like, it's Jimmy his Fallon, job to be insufferable. I just want to say. See, I disagree. Cause, like, actually, maybe I find Jimmy Fallon to be, like, you know, oddly endearing. Like, I find him to be very America's sweetheart energy. But I feel like that's more reflective of, like, a endearing feeling I have towards NBC. I just feel like NBC is like, bravo. It's like all the networks I like. I find Jimmy Kimmel insufferable. Colbert would punch you in the face. Like, I hate all of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Seth Myers. Irrelevant. I don't know her. Yeah, right. Like, you're not... It's giving late, late, you know? Yeah. Are you ready for our cute Jimmy Kimmel news? I guess. Who'd have thunk? I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> the Kirsten Dunst and Jimmy Kimmel revealed that their sons got into a fight in kindergarten. Oh, you know what? I'm so glad you brought up Kirsten Dunst because she said something funny. Well, this is another funny thing that she said, but she was on Jimmy Kimmel Live and they revealed that their two kids who are the same age go to kindergarten together and they recently had some trouble in school. Jimmy said, did, they had a fight, you know? Did you hear about this? And she That's said, funny. she said, I heard in our parent-teacher conference, Miss Julie told me about it. I know that Billy was sitting in a chair and Ennis then went to sharpen a pencil or something, came back, saw there was an empty chair and sat in it and Billy came back and was mad that Ennis was in his chair. Oof. That's cute. Uh, Kirsten Dunst is doing press for something. I don't know what, but I, she keeps popping up for me. Um, 
And she said a lot of like cute, funny things that were all completely negated because then she also said something positive about Jonathan Glazer. And I was like, oh, I can't take this person seriously. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But, but she did say, and I feel like it was actually, um, like it made a lot of sense because she was asked about plastic surgery. She's like, I just don't do it because like, I'm afraid of looking crazy. And honestly, I like looking a little bit old. Like I get booked for jobs. Like I'm a working actor. Yeah. And then she was also, someone was like, would you ever do another superhero movie? She's like, yeah, of course I have kids. Like <laughs> I got to pay bills. They pay really well. And then she also said when asked about like method acting, she was like, I'm a mom. Like, how am I going to method act to come in as, you know, Mary Todd Lincoln, like into the living room? I'm a parent. She's like, I feel like that's only something like a, a man can get away with. Like, no, I'm a full time parent. I can't come in in costume and in character. No, I'm obsessed. That's hysterical. I know. She's in a new project called Civil War. And Got I, it. for a second, I'm thinking, is this a period piece about and the Civil War? Because that, it would be like, you know, when it rains, it pours. All of a sudden, we're getting American history period pieces. But I don't think that's what it is. No, also, um, when we were having the conversation earlier this it's giving, week about... It's modern day. We oh, it's like dystopian. Earlier this week about like celebrity couples who do the same thing. A lot of people were commenting that we forgot about her and Jesse Plemons. And they really are on the same level. They're both like really serious working actors who aren't like, you know, getting paparazzi. Like, yeah. they probably have like a really, actually a really nice life. Yeah. Because the way she talks, she sounds very normal. Yeah, she does. That's funny. Where was she saying that stuff? She's been doing just like a bunch of different press for this project. And it just all came up on your TikTok? Twitter. Twitter. Well, this project, Civil War, it's, a, it's, not, it's not a period piece, though. It's like, you know, that it's modern. I okay. just want to clarify. Um, those were the fast five. I really enjoyed them. I'm not going to lie. So much so, I, I, you know, I should stay in the chair. But... Don't go anywhere. It's Queenie and Weenie of the Week, our weekly segment where Jackie and I bestow an important honor to two different people, places, or things for being the Queenie of the Week or the Weenie of the Week. Just a reminder to everyone to act right, you know? We have to keep everyone afraid, you know, ruling with an iron fist. Don't act like a weenie because you will be Weenie of the Week. Now, let's start positive with Queenie. My Queenie of the Week is me because I went through something extremely traumatic and then I came here and really gave, I think, one of our best shows, like definitely this week. Um, like that Sophia Regar moment was classic Jackson Claude. It'll go down in the history books. And all that after experiencing not one, not two, but three traumatic moments before 10.30 a.m. So I am giving myself the Queenie of the Week honor this week, and I hope that's okay. That's okay for Queenie of the Week this week. I'm giving myself for successfully oh. pranking you oh. on April Fool's. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was good. No, that was good. Honestly, that was good. Yeah. I mean, there are queenie moments abound for the two of us. We could go on and on. We could, but you know what? You're actually inspiring me to change my weenie of the week to me for trying to prank you on April Fool's and failing so abysmally. Like, that was actually the weeniest, like, the, de the truest definition of weenie. Like, weenie. Because I was, I was going to give my weenie before you just inspired me to the Instacart driver who shot Angie Harmon's dog. But that's not weenie. That's, that's not weenie. That's like, not embarrassing. It's, That's It's important insane. that we keep Weenie like fun and light, light, not to a murderer. So Weenie of the Week, actually, I am my own Queenie and my own Weenie because honestly, trying to prank you the day after and like with the worst prank and like you just clocked me in 30 seconds, like it was humiliating and it was Weenie-like. So I, what the, we, what the Queenie giveth, the Weenie taketh away. Get you a girl who can do both. Yeah. Now, a Weenie did not really stand out to me this week and I will not say that it's you. Okay. Because you are not the weenie of the week. I abstain. Okay, I want to say something that I feel like you're not taking queenie and weenie. I feel like you've abstained like twice before. Like I never have. I feel like you have. And I feel like abstaining is not an option. So come up with a weenie. If you're going to abstain, you can only abstain queenie. New rule. Okay. What? I don't know that I want to start stuff. With me? No. With who? Who am I always starting stuff with? I don't know, the Elon haters? I don't no, know. no. Oh, no, starting stuff like personal. Not, uh, not the public. The personal. Ben. Ben, please go. Like, for having a five-day birthday. See, that's, that is a perfect weenie. See, I'm glad I pushed you. <laughs> I'm okay. glad I pushed you. Okay. I'm sorry, Ben. I love you. Happy birthday. Enjoy the olive oil. Did, did I even get credit? 
for the gift that I got for Ben? Um, he literally texted you in the big family no, I'm saying, chat with I'm everyone. Sorry, publicly. I posted it on my Instagram and Ben posted it on his Instagram. You did? You guys did? Yeah. I said, oh my God, LOL, Jackie actually did it. She bought Ben the most expensive olive oil money can buy. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, I guess I missed it. Yeah, you guys, I I'll did it. I'll send you a screenshot. I got him olive oil because I care. It was a really good gift. Yeah, and I hope you nonetheless. It. How much was it? So it was um, $60 at Cinderella. Oh, okay. I thought we were buying like $5,000 olive oil. Oh, no, no. I got the most expensive one that I could find at Cinderella, but you can get it on Amazon for like $35. Oh, wow. You got got by Cinderella. A bit, but the presentation and the Cinderella name as opposed to like if you just opened an Amazon box and there was olive oil, like that's crap. I paid the agreed, extra 25 agreed. for the presentation and the vibes. I agree. And, I the agree. Name, and the name recognition. And the shopping bag that we got from it, which is really the best gift money can buy. Yeah, so I feel really good about it. I hope he makes you something super tasty. And I feel really good about what we did here today. Despite, against all odds, we put on a show for you. Hopefully it was recorded. And against all odds, that's a chance I've got to take. Also, my weenie of the week is YouTube for demonetizing us when we're just trying to do Did we get demonetized? No, when we try and listen to music. Like, come on, man. Of course we know Waterloo. Waterloo. Yeah, we knew it. Oh, what? I always thought they were saying Xanadu. They're saying Waterloo. And if we could just listen to a snippet yesterday, we would have known that. Rats. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast and Lenny Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast and a podcast can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iRadio, Castbox, all the places. Wherever you listen to podcasts, find us at Toast and Five Star. Everybody, beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Love ya. Bye.